Good evening everyone, time for another silver update. This is the 30 minute chart of silver provided by netdania.com. You can click on the link below. You can see that we had a breakout of our descending trend line. The primary descending trend line that we had really only crossed right here and here and then we had the breakout back here. The breakout from this line was just this morning and Sunday night and you can see after that we got a significant rally today. So we're looking at the next resistance levels of 33 and some change and then we're looking at about 34 and a half. These are going to be the old highs that we had uh, on this uh, route on this uh, falling um, series of rallies so the big question is is going to be has this reversed itself or is it going to turn around and go down uh, clearly these two downtrend lines have been violated and quite clearly this uh, second one with the rally this morning now we had some talk from Bernanke today uh, about how we may need to print more money apparently that gave some legs to the silver and gold markets so uh, I don't think that anybody who has been seriously following the Bernanke Fed for the number of years that I've been following them doubts that at some point they're just gonna print more money because they're they're just a one-trick pony they really only have one trick in their bag. I don't think there's there's maybe a 1% chance that this current Federal Reserve that we have is going to do something like Volcker did. And we know with the fiscal situation that we're in, if interest rates even hit 5% with a nearly $4 trillion budget, and a 16 trillion dollar debt that uh, even a 5% interest rate would probably mean complete collapse for the United States so they've really painted themselves into a corner they can only print more money and uh, that's what they're going to do uh, they have a lot of machinations which they do they generate deflation scares and they uh, do all kinds of shenanigans to try to convince you that they aren't going to print money but they definitely are going to print more money that's their only way out uh, of the situation they've gotten themselves in into so the we'll see if the 31 dollar 10 cent uh, price ends up being a bottom if you've been following me I you, you know that I picked up some of the dragons down around in here and uh, if we look at the dragons you can see I think this is the uh, Atmex they actually got in another couple thousand of them I don't really know how that works I don't know if they just order more from Perth and those come these came very quickly so you can see that for the bank wire at 2343 still in my opinion a very good price if you're willing to make the numismatic gamble uh, this I don't call this a semi numismatic for me the semi numismatics that I've done have been around three dollars and at most four dollars above spot this one's all the way up at eight dollars above spot but because of the exceptional demand which I see for this coin and I project in the future I, I decided to go ahead and buy it 22 72 so you can see that it's still close to that price they ran out fairly quickly the last time we'll see if this one runs out uh, fairly quickly now I want to jump over to the uh, question of the day and that's on the forum and this is from Mr. Baghead and the question is hey been watching your videos for a while now I've noticed you mentioned FOFOA from FOFOA.blogspot.com a couple times. Part of his theory, which I think originated with FOA, another or someone else a few years ago as part of the free gold idea, 
was that the paper gold market would collapse completely right before the price of physical goes totally parabolic. I can tell you won't be waiting until that point to buy. However, it would be a treat to see what you think about this or even of the free gold idea in general. Now, I, I've covered FOFOA in the past. In fact, I've done a, a almost 10-part series taking apart his uh, silver uh, analysis. I don't agree with FOFOA. It, for those of you who aren't familiar, you have to go back to FOA. And FOA was a gentleman who was posting back in the late 90s. That stands for friend of another and his thesis, his primary thesis was that oil and gold flow in opposite directions. So that although the petrodollar recycling system was causing an enormous number of dollars to flow to the Middle Eastern oil nations, and consequently those dollars would flow back into the Western banking system, that that was not considered by the oil nations to be a safe bet and that under the table they requested that a certain amount of physical gold flow to them as well. Now a very interesting twist on the FOA story is the way that the World Bank and the powers that be in the United States and NATO and whoever they are we don't know who's behind all this but they are kind of toppling these governments one by one and snatching that gold. We, we saw it begin in Tunisia, spread to Egypt. They toppled Libya and uh, apparently took that gold. So um, it seems that the FOA idea is kind of operating in reverse. Now FOFOA has continued with the FOA idea I don't believe it's the same person, but I definitely disagree with FOFOA about silver, and I've done a number of exposés on his articles about silver. I think he's just plain wrong about it. I think that silver is a much better investment than gold, and that uh, the, the really the only argument he can make is that uh, if you insist upon making silver a monetary metal once more, then you will threaten gold and hence you'll threaten the powers that be and uh, you will be in danger of whatever he's saying so uh, I think for the most part it's a bunch of nonsense and uh, there's definitely uh, truth behind the original FOA thesis but I really don't agree with FOFOA so let's go over to the main story of the night and that's going to be rare earths and uh, I wanted to examine that let's start off with the latest news story and this was one that broke a couple of weeks ago uh, just over a week ago and this is the EU the US Japan launch rare earth WTO case against China now this whole idea to me is just utterly absurd I'm gonna dig into it and show you the irony of it but first let's look at the ones involved here the EU the US and Japan so here are your top crybabies about trade and what is so ironic about this and I'm gonna delve into that in a bit when I get into the facts of this but uh, the EU the US and Japan these are some of the biggest crybabies about Chinese currency manipulation so we've got these countries uh, screaming and crying and 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 having a temper tantrum about the fact that the Chinese have pegged their currency to the US dollar and have successfully taken over much of the manufacturing in the world and uh, have become the chief exporter of just about everything that's manufactured in the world and their charge is that China is a currency manipulator and uh, that China is keeping its currency too low that a current its currency needs to appreciate 
which will cause prices to rise, which will cause Chinese exports to be more expensive, which will cause uh, the other countries to be able to create more jobs. So now here with the rare earth situation here, I'll read a little bit of this. The United States, Europe, and Japan joined forces Tuesday against China's restrictions on exports of rare earth minerals that are critical to production of advanced technology and clean energy goods expected to provide the jobs of the future. We want our companies building those products right here in, in America, but to do that, American manufacturers need to have access to rare earth materials, which China supplies. President Barack Obama said at the White House. Quote, now if China would simply let the market work on its own, we'd have no objections. But their policies currently are preventing that from happening and they go against the very rules that China agreed to follow, Obama said. He cast the decision to take action with the European Union and Japan at the World Trade Organization as part of stepped up U.S. effort to make sure countries play by global trade rules. Quote, our competitors should be on notice. They will not get away with skirting the rules, Obama said. So, uh, unbelievable. This joker, Obama, is simultaneously claiming that China is making their rare earth exports too expensive and that requires a charge at the WTO and at the same time he's saying that he's saying that they're pegging their currency to the US dollar and they're making their currency too low which means they're making their exports too cheap so the United States is actually claiming at the same time that China is making its exports both too cheap and too expensive so that's the absurdity of these people that they're just a, a ridiculous bunch of buffoons the things they say make absolutely no sense and it's just a, that they're they they're becoming a world laughing stock so let's look at the issue of rare earths now to understand rare earths uh, it, that they're actually not rare at all so this is from a, a PDF and I'm going to link this and uh, this PDF is a congressional research service on rare earth elements the global supply chain you can see this was put out in September of 2011 now uh, we don't have time to go into a lot of this but I just wanted to expose some of the facts of this China currently uh, produces about 95 percent of the rare earths now this graph here uh, from the Washington Post you can see historically that uh, back in about 1983 or so China pretty much didn't produce any of the rare earths and from that time China has now come to completely dominate the rare earth market the United States produced uh, the vast majority you can see from about 1965 through 1985 the United States pretty much produced the same amount as the rest of the world and then the Chinese uh, rare earth story began you can see the United States and the rest of the world pretty much on this chart are at zero the United States is clearly at zero so back to the PDF here uh, the uh, rare earth production uh, and uh, these reserves you have to remember we're going to talk about the reserves that the, the world has and they talk about China having 50 percent of the world's reserves of rare earths I don't think the number is nearly that high and I, I can go into these other articles that show that it's not nearly that high but uh, we can see here that the United States holds 13 percent according to the most recent USGS estimate. So the United States holds 13% of the reserves of rare earth metals. Now, if we look at the listing 
for the United States of countries and this is a, a Wikipedia article on a list of countries by area this is the land mass of the largest countries in the world you can see that uh, the United States and China are pretty much a tie here you can see the world has about 500 million this is total square kilometers and the United States and China we're gonna round up and just say they have roughly 10 million square kilometers so basically the United States and China hold each hold about 2% of the Earth's land mass you can see that Russia is all the way up here uh, nearly 4% there's Antarctica Canada also has roughly 2% of the world's land mass and then we've got Brazil Australia etc so these are the big ones but uh, back to the article so the United States having 13 percent of uh, rare earth metal reserves while having only two percent of the earth's land mass obviously is a nation that's blessed with a large amount of these minerals uh, or metals I'm sorry and uh, shouldn't have any problem extracting them so uh, when we look at this story here that uh, that China is setting restrictions we know that the price is rising the story that we just had here well about uh, how to free the world from uh, the rare earth uh, stranglehold that China has uh, it goes into the cost now uh, I don't have there's just so much to cover here I don't have time but I'll try to summarize basically uh, rare earths are not really rare at all uh, they're pretty much all around the world uh, you can see here it's worth recapping how China managed to corner the rare earth market despite their name rare earths elements aren't actually all that rare at all so it's not a matter of them being rare in the sense that uh, they're not that common they're actually more common than other deposits like uh, copper deposits and you can read that in the articles and I'm going to link here but it's not that they're that rare it's that their extraction is difficult because they're widely dispersed and there's a tremendous environmental impact so basically the United States and the rest of the world has been enjoying uh, the benefits of the Chinese environmental crisis that has been going on and now that China has decided to deal with its environmental crisis it's being accused by the United States and Europe and Japan of uh, manipulating trade so the absurdity of this is so clear there's no way that China can win on the one hand if China has its exports very very cheap and its currency low uh, and it uh, dominates manufacturing because it's willing to do things very cheaply and export to the rest of the world it's a currency manipulator yet if China decides to protect its environment by restricting the export of rare earth metals causing the price to rise and normally would cause the other countries to produce themselves and and have that production go online then it's a a rare earth market manipulator so there's clearly no way for China to win the uh, Western crybabies the EU US and Japan which are really in my opinion just a bunch of lazy slackers who want to print money and uh, live off the work of China which is coming to an end uh, the United States is now running a 3.7 trillion dollar budget every year uh, none of that money went into exploration none of that money has gone into training of scientists and that's another issue is that even if the United States wanted to ramp this up we don't have the trained scientists and geologists anymore because our colleges are putting out a bunch of liberal brainwashed educationists sociologists and none of these people really are uh, informed in the hard sciences 
while China is putting out the engineer. So even if we wanted to, we couldn't because we've adopted the socialist crybaby mindset that is uh, blaming China for everything. So to me, this is just a shocking story of the decline of the West and how uh, hardworking Chinese, uh, there's absolutely no way they can win in this type of rig scenario. So back to silver, uh, in regards to the rare earth story, silver is very important because silver is more like a rare earth, it is more and more becoming like one of the rare earth metals every day in that uh, silver is becoming less and less available to be mined directly and more and more silver is mined as a byproduct. Uh, so obviously the price of silver needs to rise much, much higher for there to be exploration, for there to be silver mining endeavors, silver specific mining endeavors. The price is far too low. The same is true for rare earth uh, metals. The price needs to rise much higher for the countries that uh, are enjoying the very cheap uh, exports of China and the environmental uh, disasters that are uh, caused by that. As that begins to end, the prices need to rise much higher so these countries can produce these, uh, these resources themselves. But it's much easier to just complain and point the finger at China rather than to actually do some hard work as opposed to printing a bunch of money and uh, importing everything. So silver is going to rise much higher from here. The story is very similar to the rare earths and uh, China is pretty much done with exporting rare earths as they consider that a valuable resource. They're also pretty much done with exporting silver. They consider that a rare resource and uh, they're going to force others to mine it and actually do some work. And we'll talk to you next time.